24 hours in with a Huawei Watch 2 and what do I think? This is Basil with BTECH and Wearable taking a look at the Huawei Watch 2, Huawei's latest wearable announced here at Mobile World Congress 2017 alongside the flagship P10. The Huawei Watch 2 is a much sportier looking and specced out piece of kit than its predecessor. I'm going to talk about that in a sec but before I do a very big thank you to Vodafone for supplying us with a roaming SIM card laden with 4G data. The reason this is exceptionally relevant to this review is because it sits inside the Huawei Watch 2 to provide provide it with 4G. Now the Watch 2 is available in two variants. There's a standard version I've got here with 4G um, connectivity and of course there is the classic more elegant looking version although this is definitely a sportier watch than the original Huawei watch in look and feel and it doesn't in any guise feel in any way feminine to be honest with you. Um, I was quite disappointed that there wasn't a more accessible version um, for men and women who just wanted a softer looking device but hey, so I personally am regarding this as a supplement to the original Huawei watch as opposed to a true successor. Now, if we talk about the design of the watch, you can see it has a ceramic frame. Um, it's nice and reflective and it's really rich feeling and looking. 1.2 inch display is pretty small. It's an AMOLED display over 300 pixels per inch. So kind of pretty standard 326 with a 390 by 300, uh, 390 resolution. You can see it's a relatively thick device. It's over 12 millimeters thick, 12.6. And it's also, like I said, just pretty bold, pretty masculine, available in three colors. We've got the black one, two buttons. I love buttons for watches because interaction is great. The bezel doesn't turn, the ring doesn't turn, so the buttons are a lifesaver. Of course, there is a, that touch screen, but given the size, 1.2 inches, it's not something you'll always want to be interacting with when you are on the go. Now, it isn't standard watch strap fittings for the Sport, I do not think, or the regular version, sorry, but the Classic has 22 millimeter um, watch strap fittings. And if I squeeze this into place, you can see uh, it's all very nice and fiddly in true watch strap style. We'll get there and as we do, and um, before we do, I'm gonna talk you around the rest of this watch. So it runs Android Wear 2, which is great because it means you've got Google Assistant out of the box, you've got standalone application support, and they are two things that take advantage better than ever of the fact you've got 4G LTE connectivity on board. Now, the standard strap fittings are rubber, but they aren't that clingy rubber that just makes my Gorilla-esque wrists just pain. Instead, you've got a very, very comfortable um, textured material and it, if, if I can actually get this thing on, um, fits on my wrist really nicely, sits very securely, and the strap, because there is a little wedge underneath the <clears throat> ring there, just locks in place very, very well. So I can pull that off and now talk you around the rest of the design. Around the back, you can see you've got a heart rate monitor and four pins. The heart rate monitor when in sports mode takes a reading every second, otherwise readings at intervals in order to just keep track of what's going on. There is a GPS under this thing as well. I'll talk you around the UI interaction as well and the various watch faces, but suffice to say, this is, like I said, really one for sporty users and that is reflected in the battery life. Huawei states that even this version, the GPS laid in a original um, and with LTE which weighs 42 grams is going to last you a full two days. 420 uh, milliamps of battery under the hood of this thing and there is a power saving mode on it as well. What that does is it deactivates pretty much all the smarts under here except for the pedometer and the watch and it will last a full full week. So <laughs> what you get is not necessarily a smart watch but a fitness tracker that looks pretty darn good if indeed you dig this look and feel. It's going for the tagger kind of look and feel rather than the Moto 360 like the original Huawei watch did. As far as charging goes it charges with a little dock that clips on the clips on and connects to those four pins very very nice and strong magnet um, so that's simple enough it is proprietary but don't mind that too much um, and in my experience with that the battery life has been relatively true to form after one full day with a little bit of GPS uh, walking I've managed to end the day at about 60% so two days is very realistic and meanwhile it had been connected to my Huawei P10 the entire time I'll come on to the software in a little bit there are two kind of veins of software. There's the uh, Android Wear software and there is the um, Huawei Watch software. So before I do, there is a disclaimer that this is a prototype device 
pre-production even, sorry, so the software isn't final and there were some things I just couldn't work through. I'll explain them, but first, Android Wear 2. The biggest thing about Android Wear 2 is standalone application support. It has its own app store, the Google Play Store. If I tap through on the button on the top right, that takes me to all my applications and you can see Android Pay is supported. This thing has NFC, but also I've got a lot of applications on here and the Play Store is one of them. So whether I'm using the SIM card under the hood of this thing or connecting it to a phone and using its 4G, um, I'm able to access individual applications. Um, it all does take a little bit more time than it would on a phone but there is that Bluetooth connection taking place as I'm currently pulling from the phone. The Play Store um, on the Android Wear devices is relatively limited but it's still nice to have and the fact you can install stuff like a voice recorder and this is the Huawei voice recorder just adds real value to this and brings it up to speed with the Apple Watch and the Samsung Gear S3. Hopefully in time this will nail it with regards to app support but right now um, app choices are a little bit thin on the ground as is support for that L LTE. I've set this bottom right hand button for example to launch Spotify and it's doing it. You can see it's not the quickest thing in the world um, but it still gets there um, and what's annoying about that is when I'm out and about it won't do so with 4G. This is something that can be fixed with an update but it's just you know something to watch. If you want to pick this up pretty much now you will have a few apps that just aren't going to give you everything that you're going to want. If you're sold into the Google way of doing things, the Google Play Store and Google services, you should be pretty well catered for though. Taking a look at Google Play Music for example, this has four gigabytes of storage on board and two gigabytes user available and you can download songs. Let me whack up the volume. This is the speaker on the watch itself. This is basically a little Bluetooth speaker on your wrist. I was really, really surprised by the volume of it. Um, yeah, it, I mean, if I was at a party and I was super desperate, I'd crank this thing up. Oh yeah, it's a real bad boy when it comes to speaker sound. Um, of course, your phone will probably be better, but I, you know, the fact you can independently use this, access a Google Play Store, leave your phone at home, and still have a music player is a pretty sweet deal. Um, and it's a much, much better speaker than an Apple Watch, for example. So with regards to the UI, I'm gonna talk you how to navigate through the whole thing now. If I pull down from the top, I can get my quick toggles. And if I, and here I can access my overall settings and if I pull down from the bottom I can access my notifications um, and see that application has installed. Someone's liked a photo on Instagram. What's also great there is a clear all function, a native clear all function that lets me very very easily and quickly um, clear my cards as they used to be known on Android Wear. This is a much much better implementation of um, the top and bottom of the home screen or the watch face. If I long press the watch face I can see this is where I can customize the look and feel of my current watch face and right through from background image to the style depending on the watch face that will dictate your options if I just swipe right that's where I can add more watch faces I can directly access them from the Google Play Store swipe left to access the watch faces that I currently have um, and there are some very sporty watch faces on here and um, there is an energetic watch face so you can get your pedometers um, all your fitness data um, on there and it's all very customizable. Um, you can see the right hand side customization takes me straight through to the sports option which I've used and I will talk about shortly um, and the left hand side takes me straight through to my calls. So I can make calls on the SIM card on here independently or I can mirror the phone. Um, so yeah, if I want to jump straight into sports, you can see there are a whole load of sports systems that you can work to. Using the Huawei Wear application, you can set fitness goals and stuff, but the syncing system isn't perfect, again, because this is a pre-production version. So don't you know count on this for um, pulling anything just yet, and that's why I'm going to hold off reviewing that element of it. I did use it yesterday, GPS on and everything, um, and I've just found it quite hard to pull that data and analyze it to gauge how good it is. Um, so yeah, if you just want to flick this um, on and get a step count, a more accurate calorie count based on heart rate um, and a distance count using the GPS, great. But if you want to be using that data, just hold out until the full, full reviews are posted here and elsewhere. So you can see just today, I've, my step count is 438. When you tap through on it, the ring system is very reminiscent of Apple's, how many steps, how many minutes, and how many times you've got up and sat down. And if I tap through on that again, um, I did a whole load of stuff yesterday, um, but that isn't on here. So you can't really access too much information of your like historic information. Um, but that said, as you can see, you can do stuff like VO2 max, and it does give you um, your BMI as well. Um, so the VO2 
VO2 max is calculated with your heart rate. How accurate is it? Again, can't say just yet. I'm in the hotel room in Barcelona. In the last 24 hours, I haven't got on a treadmill and sweated my tail end off. Still, you know what? This thing is good as far as sports goes from the off, just based on the specs. Um, and in using it, the GPS um, on and everything, it ties up with the battery claims that Huawei seems to be making. Other key specs include a Snapdragon processor under the hood. It's a Snapdragon Wear 2100 with 768 megabytes of RAM. Like I said, it is um, loaded up with four gig of uh, storage, but that is uh, only two gigabytes user available. Um, as far as Google Assistant goes, I can give you a quick demo of that. Tell me about Barcelona. And so it has done right there. Um, and I can open it on my phone. Um, it's really, really simple. Google Assistant is great. Contextual search um, on your wrist. It's <laughs> kind of annoying that the watch has got it before the phone, but that is a byproduct of it having Android Wear too. Um, so you can customize the button on the bottom right. Like I said, I've got it to launch Spotify. Now, if I was to single press the top button on the right, that takes me to my applications where I can pin applications to the top. And if I was to long press, that launches Google Assistant. As far as the default application goes, the applications go, it's very similar to stuff we've seen before. You can also install games on here um, that run independently. I've got this, for example, Nougaland, which is just a uh, um, Flappy Bird type game um, with the Nico the Cat. Um, and as you can see, you've got that voice recorder application that I installed. Generally impressed with this watch in many ways. I don't like the fact the screen is so small. Um, I do like the user interface. The design actually is pretty okay for me. If a little bit masculine, um, should I want something a little bit more accessible for um, anyone who doesn't want something that looks so sporty. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's all gonna come down to how that sporting integration works with the Huawei Fit application and the watch. And that is something I am yet to be able to review until we get a final version. So that's been my Huawei Watch 2 24 hour review. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did click that thumbs up button, stay tuned to BTECH and Wearable for the latest from MWC 2017. And if you've got any questions, fire them through in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.